Um, Rick is back with me as well now, and I don't think, um, I mean, I don't think we could have done a better job than Matt just did on um, kind of teeing up who our next guest is. Um, Tom Fanning is not only the CEO of Southern Company, but he is also the only private sector member of the Cyber Solarium Commission. Um, and Tom is joining us uh, today from Atlanta. It looks like your office there in Atlanta. Hi, Tom. That's where I am. Great to see you. Excellent. Nice to see you too. Atlanta just had a storm uh, roll through a couple minutes ago. So uh, I, I'm glad that you took care of that as the CEO of Southern Company. The lights are still on. I put the lines up myself. <laughs> That's excellent. Well, thank you so much, Tom. You've been um, a guest with the Cyber Brief in the past talking about really the critical importance of that public private sector relationship. And so let me just start off, and, and Rick probably will have a couple questions as well. But you know, many in the audience already know, Rick knows this, uh, that cybersecurity of critical infrastructure is one of the most pressing national security issues right now. And being that you were the only private sector member of that Cyber Solarium Commission, I'm wondering if you can kind of give us your thoughts on how we address the issue of other people, uh, of cybersecurity with other people um, who are working in the private sector to kind of help them gain the gravity of understanding that they need to on this issue that you have. Yeah, sure. And I look, I think there's plenty of uh, momentum behind the idea that the private sector has to lean into this. You know, when the first Solarium Commission was formed, uh, it was President Eisenhower in the 50s basically reimagining national defense in a post-World War II environment. And on the East was the Soviet Union, on the West was effectively NATO, and the imagination of the conflict was a tank battle on the plains of Poland. We know that today the battle is not on the plains of Poland, it is on our telecommunication networks, our electricity grids, and our financial systems. There are no oceans that separate us from the conflict. And so now that we see that, you know, solar winds is just kind of a great backdrop, but we also know that solar winds is a terrible misnomer because we know there was a lot of precursors to solar winds and a lot of, whether it's exfiltration or I like to say, you know, metastasized efforts, it has moved into a whole different range in the private sector. It is very clear that our national defense is driven now by what's occurring in domestic operations in the private sector. And so this idea of somehow the federal government is going to do for us is, is just uh, uh, just doesn't apply anymore. 87% of the critical infrastructure is owned by the private sector. So what we have to do is understand how, first, we can illuminate the battlefield, that we can understand what's happening here. And when I first took over, I've kind of helped lead the electricity sector now for seven years. Very early on, it became very clear to me that we didn't live in a silo, that there was so much interdependency in the economy between, say, electricity and finance and telecom and all the other sectors we really did need to join arms. We created something called a tri-sector group, which was finance, telecom, electricity. And we did, the first thing was to create a, a joint evaluation of the threat matrix. What threats are out there? How likely are they? And what is the magnitude of damage should they get in? And so we develop a sense of priority on how to allocate scarce resources, including CEO and board attention. And, and, and we've taken it from there. Look, I think, I think the private sector is in. In terms of tactically, how did we shop ideas of the Cyberspace Solarium Commission with members of the private sector? Really kind of two big things. One is we already leveraged ideas like this tri-sector group. We brought in representatives from time to time as guests into the uh, Solarium Commission meetings. And then secondly, from time to time, I would interface with, say, the Business Roundtable or the U.S. Chamber or folks like that. Mm -hmm. Rick, questions from you. You're in the um, position where you get to ask them now as opposed to um, being asked. <laughs> well, uh, Tom, thanks for, thanks for being here and thanks for what you've uh, done. I'm actually a, a beneficiary of some of your work because I'm on the, uh, the NIAC now. 
And, oh, dynamite. Uh, yeah. And so um, I, I really uh, uh, like uh, the work that, uh, that you did uh, when you were there. And uh, we're, we're hopefully building on that in a, in a good way. Um, one of the things that uh, we have uh, focused on is um, an information sharing uh, uh, approach. Uh, and uh, Mike Wallace calls it uh, uh, privately, executive driven, private sector led sharing effort, which I think is the, is the right approach, executive driven, where the CEO, senior executives of the companies need to be invested in this, and, and driving to make it happen. And government comes along for the ride as opposed to the usual thing, which is government sets up something and asks the private sector to come to it. Um, yeah. And, I, and, and I, I wondered if you had any thoughts on what you think uh, is essential for making something like that work. So uh, I, I definitely have a lot of thoughts here. I'll try and keep them concise. Um, here's the thing, because so much of the attack vector is centered in on what could create an existential threat in America. So I think from my perspective, I'm not so concerned with, and I understand it's important, and there's a whole lot of things to worry about, punks, thugs, and criminals, okay? I get that. But what I'm after here is the existential threat. And so the idea of sharing, as it applies to our national security interest, is almost archaic. That is, what we need to aspire to as a nation is a real-time structure where we have in one place, it could be virtual, it could be also physical. I actually like the physical aspects and one of the recommendations of NIAC goes to, goes to that idea and is consistent with what we're doing at Solarium. So thanks for your work there. But is the idea of a place, virtual or physical, both, where we're able to evaluate the battlefield by knitting together to the different pictures of the intelligence community, our sector-specific agencies, the view from the battlefield of our own systems and networks in the private sector, and I wanna make sure that the guys that will hold the bad guys accountable, whether that's DOD, FBI, US Cyber Command, I want to make sure they see the same thing I see when I see it. That is the only way we can really knit together a quilt of information that gives us the full, the full panorama of the threat. And also, to get ahead of the game, gives the government a benefit of seeing what critical infrastructure I have and how I use it and how I help protect it. That gives them some advantages in thinking about opportunity sets elsewhere. And I get the benefit of not responding to somebody that just landed on the beach, but rather keeping them in the ocean and making sure that they understand that if they try to mess with the United States, we have well-founded behaviors, so that there will be consequences, that we have an attack capability on our own that will hold the bad guys accountable, and that we will harden our own defenses so that an attack just doesn't make sense. The cost of messing with the United States will be so great that will, in essence, impair them from having the appetite to do that. I yes. like it. Yeah. yeah. I do too, and I was just gonna say, you know, you talk about sort of collective defense and a potential collective response, and so, um, you, you know, you've been on enough of these commissions, um, you've been enough of these in, in enough of these high level conversations where there has to be something that comes out of it. So what are the next steps? I mean, without going through obviously the Cyber Solarian Commission recommendations, just top of mind for you, what needs to happen soonest? Yeah, man, so here's the deal. Um, I've been very happy with Solarium Commission's ability to execute so far. Of our recommendations, round numbers, just a little bit less than half, have already found their way into legislation, the National Defense Authorization Act. We're working on the others right now. For example, the SICKI concept, for example, collective defense, for example, this idea of uh, sharing requirements and liability limitations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're working through all of those things right now. And I'm, I'm very happy with that. And, and it's interesting. I'm in my normal course of doing what I do at 
CEO of Southern or working on national energy policy. I have a long track record with the Federal Reserve Bank and chaired Atlanta Federal Reserve and worked at the Federal Reserve a little bit. I'm in Washington, D.C. a lot, and I interface with Congress a lot and the administrations, Obama to Trump, now to Biden. It is very clear to me that people recognize, people broadly, Congress, administration, otherwise, really do recognize the threat. They don't know what to do about it. Uh, it's interesting. I'm one of, I think one of the reasons I got this assignment inside my own industry, I think I'm the only CEO in our industry that was a former CIO, you know, chief information officer. So many days I thought that meant career is over. <laughs> but uh, I, I will say this. It's, and, and I was on Maria Bartiromo's show one time, and I was saying to her, it's like, Maria, you and me going out to the beach, and we're looking out over the ocean, and I say, Maria, look at the submarine battle going on out there. And we can know that there is ongoing lethal activity, but the only time we ever see it manifest itself is when something cataclysmic happens, solar winds. Mm -hmm. We want to not get there. And so people, I think, in Congress and the administration and elsewhere, are very attuned to the idea that there is a threat. They really don't know what to do about it, given that the private sector is so central to the attack vector. Mm -hmm. So if we can work together, the Solarium Commission, the folks on there are just brilliant in, in creating real tangible examples of how America can be safer by working together. That I think is the central theme it isn't so much a reimagination of the military as it is a reimagination of our national defense strategy, which must, by its nature, incorporate the private sector. That's what I'm most proud of. And I think people in Congress are really pretty incented to adopt these recommendations. And I think the administration has been so far very supportive. Mm -hmm. Rick, any closing questions? No, Tom, this is great. Thanks. Appreciate it. I appreciate what, you're, what you've been doing uh, as the CEO and in your uh, your role on uh, boards and panels and the Solarium Commission. Well, and I know you've got a great following for this conference, but I just want to say the more we do to talk about it, to get it out there, to socialize these ideas, this is all very helpful. So thank you for what you're doing. Well, thank you as well for your leadership in this area. We look forward to keeping you a part of this conversation and um, to seeing you down in Sea Island when we... Um, talk about this further um, in the fall. So thank you so much, Tom. Glad to help however I can. Appreciate it.